Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? Just getting everything set up. Give me a minute. What's up, Daniel James? What's happening? Just watching live E3 stuff. This is IGN's feed. What's up with you? Uh, it's about exactly what I thought it would be. Um, hold on, I'll tell you more in a minute. One second. All right. I mean, it's exactly like how I thought it would go. Like, um, Microsoft always has the coolest presentation. Um, Sony's are usually a little bit dry. Um, and then Nintendo's, they for whatever reason, Nintendo always gears everything like they're talking to a teenage, oh, it's like to a young kid. So it didn't surprise me. I was kind of disappointed though. Nintendo didn't show um, like uh, Metroid, or I heard they're working on a Punch Out game. Like it was all, it was like all about Pokemon and Smash Brothers, and that's it. I mean, nothing I saw at E3 is going to change like how things sell. I mean, we did, you know what? We did sell some Switches because of Fortnite coming out on Switch. So, overall, though, it's about exactly what I expected. There were, like, really no surprises. Um, other than, you know, a few. I mean, I don't really call it a surprise. It's nice to see they're working on the new Elder Scrolls. The mobile version of Elder Scrolls was kind of surprising, but... What's up, Reptile? Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to change anything. I still think the Switch will overtake the Xbox One maybe by next year, probably the year after. Um, Xbox One, they even though they had some exclusives, um, basically by buying up companies, um, I didn't see any, like, other than the Ninja Theory, I didn't think it was uh, um, a big deal. Sony's always dry. The thing, the thing is, like, if you know about the companies, especially like I do, um, it doesn't surprise me. The problem, the problem is, is like Japanese companies, um, they don't get the West, and like you know, they're still Sony's still very much a Japanese company, and Nintendo is definitely Japanese company. So um, they they're not as cool and as hip. Microsoft's a little bit more in tune with that. Always have been. I don't want to talk too much about all this. I, I got to do a podcast tonight, and I'm trying to um, keep topics. So I don't want to. I'm trying to. Talk, I'm going to talk a little bit more about E3 on my podcast. So. Yeah, I'm happy it's not a port too. But good lord, that's all they talked about. Like for like, I don't know, like 
an hour of their press conference with Smash Brothers. And then today when they started their treehouse, they just played Smash Brothers for like an hour. Yeah, right. Keep dreaming, Daniel. He might leave, but I don't think he is. E3 is overhyped. It's it's overblown. It's not. I've been to like 20 E3s, and it, every year it's gotten worse. Um, this one actually looks semi cool, like on the floor, but they make it. Let's just say when you watch it on TV, it's about a thousand times. They make it seem about a thousand times better than it actually is. Neo 2 surprised you really? I wasn't surprised there was a Neo 2. Neo, Neo sold really well. Doesn't surprise me at all. I have been... Um, I have been super, super... De I've actually done okay sales-wise. But today has been ridiculously dead. Unfortunately, like here in this town last night, it rained like almost six inches. So it's like flooded everywhere. Store wasn't flooded, but there are stores close by me that are flooded. The worst one I saw, there's a, um, there's a Carter Lumber right down the road. And oh my Lord, it is, um, they can't even get to it. It's got like three foot of water out in front of it and the store has got to be flooded all that wood soaking up that water oh they actually um they actually declared a state of emergency here in this town which is funny i live 15 minutes from here and we barely got any rain but here it just got dumped on here last night so i'm glad this store wasn't um i, I knew this one wouldn't be underwater we're kind of we we never get flooded here Anybody got any uh, any ideas of? You're a little bit excited for the sale. Oh yeah, that looked cool. That looked cool. You know what I was shocked. The, you know what I was shocked most that on the PS4, um, on on the PlayStation press conference, they didn't show Days Gone at all. Um, IGN showed it um, earlier today. And Ghost of Tsushima looks awesome. But Days Gone, they just showed it a little while ago on IGN. They had the developers on. Spider-Man looks awesome. But, I, I mean, Days Gone's one of their, like, you know, they they were showing that last year at E3. And I was shocked that they didn't even mention it in their press conference. That was kind of surprising to me. Spider-Man looks awesome. I can't wait for Spider-Man. Anybody? So I gotta I gotta do my podcast tonight. I have a bunch of topics, but I'm always looking for more topics. So if you guys got any topics, type them out of stuff I should talk about. Just Cause Four looks cool. Doom, Wolfenstein, yeah, all those look good. It was cool. It was cool to see them focus on games this year, except it was really bizarre when they started off in that, like, tent, and then they took, like, uh, like I don't know, 20-minute break to move everybody. It was just stupid. Whoever planned that out should be fired. Who? See, I gamers, Robert. Gamers won E3. I, I hate this question. Everybody always asks me. I, would, I just kind of talked about it. Um, every year, though, it's almost the same, except for the year that... 
Microsoft just pissed down their leg and, and when they announced the Xbox One and screwed it all up. Um, Microsoft always has the best presentations. They are, you get, the way I look at it though, they're, they're an American company and they get Americans and it's, you know, it's an, it's an American event and they're just much cooler. Whereas Sony and Nintendo are very Japanese companies and they just don't get the West. So, um, I would say Microsoft first, Sony second, Nintendo third. That being said, I don't think that will affect how anything sells at all. So, I still think Microsoft will end up being third place eventually. Switch is going to outsell them. So PlayStation 4 is still going to be selling like crazy. I don't think E3 matters as much on who wins and who loses. You definitely can lose, though. Um, Microsoft lost a few years ago when they tried all that bullshit with the Xbox One. Yeah, I hope Nintendo would have done a lot of things. Nintendo was very, very basic. Ex they showed some exclusives, Daniel, but I was excited for Gears 5. I mean, I'm, I'm a big Gears fan, so... The... The only thing that was weird this this year, and not that I, I don't have any problem at all with this, like I don't want anybody to take me um, mis, misconstrue what I'm saying. Um, it's weird how almost like every game nowadays is they want to put a female as the lead character. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but almost every, even Gears, I was shocked because Gears was the one that shocked me the most. Not that I care or anything, but... Gears is such like a huge macho, you know, you got these giant game guys and you're going to have a, you know, the next one's going to have a woman for the lead character. It almost seems like, like forced. Do I think E3 should be every year? Actually, I think E3 has run its course. I think Nintendo's onto something with doing their Nintendo Directs. E3 was a bigger deal before, like, YouTube and stuff like that. Hitman 2? That's cool. Well, the thing about Xbox, it hasn't changed my opinion one bit. They still talk about, did you notice, too, everything said available in the Xbox store. They're pushing digital hard, and they're pushing um, PC more than their console. And, and even though Phil Spencer... Even though Phil Spencer came out and said that they're still working on count souls, he said plural, count souls, there's a part of me that doesn't believe him because um, he almost has to say that to keep people buying the Xbox brand to keep them in that. I really still think they want to go PC only. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I've heard rumors they're working on another console. I actually think their next console really won't be a console. It'll be just like a PC in a box. Kind of like they did Steam boxes years ago. I think you'll just be buying PC. It'll be, it'll look like an Xbox probably, but it'll just run PC games. That's that's my theory anyway. They can call it a console, but it'll really be a PC with an Xbox label on it. Which is kind of what this is now, but it's still proprietary. You still got to run, still got to play Xbox games. It doesn't play PC games. So, there's really no reason that, like, the Xbox One X couldn't play PC games if they they did some tinkering. Yeah, no new Splinter Cell. Yeah, there's a lot of... It's not... E3 is not over yet, though. It wouldn't surprise me if you... This is something I wanted to talk about in the podcast. I'll do, there's really, like... There's really, like, two E3s. It's hard hard to describe. I've said this before, but... Like, like the Sony booth, for example, it'll have like everything out for people to try, but it'll also have another like big area, almost as big as the original booth, where you have to know somebody to go back there. It's called behind the scenes, like, or like EA calls it like they have these VIP areas, um, and they show more stuff back there if you're if you're one of the cool kids that get invited back there. So you'll probably hear some stuff and usually if you go back there you have to sign non-disclosure agreements you won't talk about it or whatever but that stuff usually leaks out it's for press or for for industry insiders really 
I don't want. I'll, I'll talk about it on my podcast tonight. But they use it as a way to like hobnob. Um, but I've been lucky enough to get back there many times because my distributor has some connections, um, and you see stuff that you don't see out on the normal sh show floor, and stuff they won't show on TV. But it usually leaks like a few weeks later. You'll start hearing about it. It wouldn't surprise me if there is a splinter cell somewhere behind the scenes. It might just not be ready to demonstrate yet. What is this stupid game? Dreams? It wouldn't surprise me, Reptile. There probably is Corel. They, I, I don't know. They just probably didn't want to announce it at the moment. I don't. It's weird. Who knows why game companies do th certain things? I saw so many games like behind the. Scenes. I'll, I'll tell you a good example. Um, let's see if I can find it. Okay, like, like years ago, I got into Bethesda's behind the scenes like area. They had a, they they're actually behind the scenes area was bigger than their regular area. And one of the games I saw, which was freaking awesome at the time, was Prey Two, and it was fantastic. If you look look it up on YouTube sometime and look at the videos for it, it never came out, got canceled, and I thought it was stupid because it was an awesome game. Um, I actually played it. So, um, never came out. I can't tell you how many games I played that never came out at E3. So, sometimes games, even though they show them or they announce them, they never come out. It wouldn't surprise me if some of the stuff Microsoft announced in that press conference doesn't ever see the light of day, even though they were exclusives. So, and speaking of Walmart, um, I saw somebody... Uh, Somebody, to, somebody on my Twitter feed, I can't remember who, one person was at E3. They had a Walmart Canada shirt that they were going to wear around E3. Kind of funny. Yeah, I was expecting a new MK. We'll see. What? It won't play episode two. Why not? Kicks you out. I have no idea, Tattoo. I'll, I'll say something to, to John and Michelle and see if anybody else had a problem. But I, I played Prey too. What's up, Kevin Donovan? There's a lot of that stuff though that happens at at E3. The other thing too is I wouldn't be surprised if like a lot of people don't want to go. I know LA is um, seems cool, but man, downtown LA kind of sucks now. Man, when you go to E3, it is you are stepping over homeless people left and right. It's kind of depressing. I haven't went the last couple of years, though. It's been a couple of years since I went. I, I kind of stopped going because it just got got silly. I don't know. I, I got to the point where I felt like I saw more just watching YouTube than actually being there. I don't know, man. L.A. seems even worse, though. I liked L.A., though. The last time I went, though, Carl, I didn't stay in downtown L.A. I stayed downtown L.A. every one I went. Um, I usually stayed, like, right there by the um, convention center, right across from Staples Center. But the last time I went, I stayed out at... Um, I stayed at, at City Walk by City Walk, and uh, I would. They had a boss that would run every day, 
and I just rode the bus to E3. So I actually kind of like staying out at City Walk better. Plus, I didn't have to, when I wanted to go get something to eat, I didn't have to walk over all the homeless. It's weird in L.A., though. You get, like, a different type of home. I mean, a lot of them are just freaking effing crazy. That's one thing, Carl. I'm not as used to. Well, see, I don't know how it is in New York and Philly. See, like, here in Ohio, um, I think as sad as this is, I think the cold takes care of a lot of homeless people. Dude, L.A. is terrible with homeless. It is really bad. It's getting worse every day. You feel bad for them. I mean, I saw like, I mean, it's like they're everywhere. Sad thing is, is there's not a lot you can do for a lot of those people because they're just crazy and they won't they won't go anywhere. They won't go to a home. They don't they don't understand. What's sad? This looks kind of cool. Starfield looked kind of cool, especially for Switch having uh, Star Fox in it. That looked cool. Yeah, the, the Carell, the mo most time, though, those people, like, they don't, they don't want help. Like, they don't even understand that you're, they think you're trying to screw them. They're, they're crazy. They, they think everybody's out for them. It's sad. It's hard to, it's hard to help somebody that doesn't want to help. They have it paused right now and you can't they're talking but you can't see anything oh today has been so brutal though it sucks it's so slow so slow i got a lot done though but oh. for those of you guys that don't know um that's been it was declared a state of emergency in this town because of flooding today You were thinking about what I was saying about the new Xbox being a PC. Just thinking of all the... It's going to play PC games. It would have to... It would be a Windows Store box, basically. Yeah, it would be Windows. It would run Windows. You know it would have a direct connection to the Windows Store. Did you notice, like, during their press conference, almost every game set available on the Xbox Store... I, I really think Microsoft's, they're trying to get people to build up um, a bunch of PC, almost like Steam, how you build up your, your library. That's what Microsoft's trying to do. I have a huge library on my Xbox now because all the backwards compatible games and all that. If they find a way to make all those like 360 games and all that stuff work on the PC and they can bring your library over to the PC... I could see a lot of people doing that. I, I truly believe they want to compete with Steam. I mean, there's rumors out there that they were going to they are going to buy Steam. So, I truly believe Microsoft wants to be the big guy in the PC market. And and Phil Spencer came from the PC side, so it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, viruses and exploits would be more likely to happen, probably true. Um, I think it still would be a little more locked down than a regular PC. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. But right now, technically, I mean, the Xbox One's really just kind of a PC. I'm shocked there's not any um, crazy exploits now, especially since they opened it up with, uh, like, Cody being able to run on it and stuff like that. 
only thing you for get the CEO. What do you mean, Reptile? I don't hate Microsoft. I actually like Microsoft. Um, I liked Xbox 360 a whole lot better than PS3. I I would rather have Microsoft doing well because it would be better for me than how they're doing right now. Right now they're not. Xbox One isn't doing so hot. So, oh, the CEO. You need the CEO of, of Microsoft or Valve? Valve. Well, I know um, Gabe said he'll never sell. But, I don't know, Microsoft's got more money than just about any company ever. So, um, if they really wanted to buy them, I'm sure there's a number that even even uh, even he would sell for. Valve right now is rumored to only be worth about $4 billion. Microsoft's worth about $700 billion. They could easily buy Valve if they wanted, even if they double paid for them. I have a feeling that if you offered... Uh, Gabe eight billion dollars he probably would sell. Um what's the deal? I don't Krell, that's that's kinda interesting. I know we have the deals going on and I sold out of a lot of my PlayStations. There's something weird and I talked about this the one day I was on um on John's show. Um there's something weird going on with um with Amazon for sure. If you look at, you can't even reserve any of the Sony games on Amazon, or or they they don't even have like the systems. Like third parties are selling them, but like so you can't. It, it's so weird, and I can't. I can't. It's Gabe Newell, by the way, Reptile. Uh, I can't put my finger on what's going on with Sony and Amazon. So there's something something strange going on at the moment. In some places, like okay. It, there's a part of me that wonders this too, Krell, um, about Sony. There, I, I, you know, I probably should talk about this on my podcast. Um, I don't know if this would be a good topic, though. I'll, I'll just talk about it now. Um, there's this new thing lately that companies and Microsoft started it, which it really sucks. They figured out like if you want to participate in their sales, their sales. Um, you have to advertise as a sale for free basically so you're basically giving them free advertising the only way you can participate in the sale is if you if you advertise it so um, yeah I do the podcast alone Prince um, so like like for me to participate in the um, in the sale I have to either in store I have to make some kind of display or I have to like display it I have to advertise it on my website and uh, um, and then they'll include me in the sale. And then what sucks is I still pay like say the system's three hundred dollars, but they're having it fifty dollars off. I'm still paying that three hundred dollars. And when I sell it, I'm losing fifty dollars. But later on, like a like a month later, I'll get reimbursed from Microsoft because I was part of that program. But I had to I have to prove that I advertise it, and I have to send them all my sales numbers. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and, and it's almost, it's almost not worth it. And a lot of stores like, like GameStop, I, I don't cause I'm a smaller store, but GameStop, Microsoft, I mean, Walmart, like places like that are paid to advertise. Usually they charge, like if you see a sign in a GameStop, that company paid them to put it there. Um, they didn't do it out of the kindness of their heart. Um, so this is kind of a way for companies to get free advertising without um paying for it they're like oh we'll have a sale but we make you do the advertising for free it's kind of bullshit and and i think some companies are are, are not playing the game anymore they're basically by not doing the sale they're kind of giving an fu to to sony microsoft whoever's doing the sale at the time so that's kind of a little inside info um it sucks it's bullshit you shouldn't have to advertise for free to be part of the sale so we do it most of the time but there are some there are some that we just say fuck it it's not worth it's not worth that i'm not advertising for like ten dollars off a controller or something you know
That might be a legal thing, though, Saber. That might not be... They might have had to. But, but yeah, there's some that we just pass on. I'll say, I, I'm not even going to be part of it. Because it's just not worth... It's not worth the time and effort because you might sell, like, one or two of something extra. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm sure Atari needs the, the advertising. Do I agree with game pirating? No. I mean, there's some things I don't care about, like in, like old games getting emulated and stuff. It really doesn't bother me. But game, just flat out pirating, no. So that that's that. that I think that's what's going on, Crow, with a lot of that. Even Amazon, I'm sure, doesn't want to play that game anymore. I mean, why should they advertise for free? Because Amazon's help helps Sony a whole lot more than Sony's helping Amazon. So I'm I'm sure that's what's going on. I I just have a feeling. Oh, I hate game share. Game sharing, Daniel, is the number one thing that's hurt my business. Yeah, Crow, maybe I'll talk about that a little bit on there, too. You know what? Or maybe I'll get to it next time, because I have a lot of stuff this week I want to talk about. I'm starting to keep a, a little a little notepad there. I just went over and added to it. Uh, I'm keeping a little notepad now on, um, like, topics. So, as I think about them through the week. I added that to it. I don't know if I'll get to that when I... I'm going to do... I'm going to record my podcast tonight. I, I doubt it'll be up tonight. It'll probably be up tomorrow. And for those of you guys that know, I'll pimp video right now. Um, if you want to listen to the podcast I do, it's called The Game Store Guy. It's on the Video Game Outsiders app. Um, you have to download their app. It's either on, on iOS or it's on the Play Store. Um, it's free. My my um, podcast is free. They do charge for some. It's like two bucks a month, but you, mine is free. Um, go download the app. It's called VideoGameOutsiders.com, or video, just look up Video Game Outsiders in either um, Apple Store or the Play Store. If you're actually interested to hear stuff, insider stuff like that. You wouldn't have known. Yeah, it's always a good topic to go to. Um, what do you know in general? The public doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Tattoo. I don't know. I'll, I'll say something to John and Michelle that episode 2 won't play. What are you on, Tattoo? Are you on iOS or are you on Android? The app kicks you out. Is there, is there an update? You just downloaded it, though. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, you know what? I'll load it up. Why don't I... Because I'm, I, I am, I'm, they, they were nice enough to let me do this. I'm on Android too, so um, they have a pretty big following, so it's actually a pretty good opportunity for me to go along with them. Plus, John's had me on the show a few times, so um, it's, it's, it's actually a good, good way for me to get started. So it, it was very nice of them to offer, so um let me see if it loads up for me, okay? It's working for me. I don't know. I'll 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 see if they've heard anybody else. I'll let them know. Episode number two of the Game Store Guy. I'm your host, Kevin. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at CC Games CEO or on YouTube. At now I gotta stop it. Games CEO. Um, so last week I asked you guys maybe to answer. All right. Android notifications have been slow. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's an update or something. I don't know. You just got the notification that I'm streaming. Yeah. Well, Cro for me too. 
What's up? What's up, Derek? Um, well, Carl, I'm going to talk about some insider stuff that happened to me at E3. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do an E3, but I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about modern E3, but I'm gonna talk about some of the crazy stuff that happened to me at E3 and my podcast. That's part of it. What I'm gonna talk about. I've had some some nice encounters at E3. So I so yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a different different spin on E3. Some just some stories from E3. And I, I and I've been I've been like uh, writing them down, but I have a lot of the crazy stories over the years that have happened in the store. So I've been keeping track of some of those. I don't know how long I'm going to go tonight. I'll see how long I can record this. I'm kind of lazy, and I like to do that. I, I the the first two um, podcasts, I that's just me talking. I didn't I didn't cut or edit or any of that stuff. Um, I'm, I like to do it all in one like long take. So I don't want to get into all the editing and all that stuff. So except my first one, I did I did do a nice podcast that it got erased. So I had to do I had to do my first one over again, which was kind of and it actually was a totally different podcast. So the only one that truly heard my first podcast was my dog. Sorry, Tattoo. <laughs> Carl, I won't tell Matt. You know what? I listen to Matt's, but I'm not that. The voice actors don't interest me as much as some people. Um, you know what's funny, funny about that, Carl? Um, I have a theory about, and, and I might talk about this a little bit tonight. Um, the people that make the games, that are into the games, they... The, I mean, the last lady he had on, she's already, she's a, she's an actress, she's already in stuff, but the other people that I really don't care too much about, um, I really don't care about the voice actors, honestly. Um, sometimes it's cool when there's a big star in in there, um, like the guy who's Kratos, I I think he's cool because I was a big Stargate fan, so I would be interested in hearing from him. Um, but. Uh, I really don't care about the people that make the games that much. And I think a lot of the developers, that's part of the problem with E3. A lot of the developers and the people that make the games, they want to be famous. And E3 is almost like their 15 minutes of fame to be to be that. And I think sometimes it's a detriment to them. I think sometimes when they go up on stage or whatever, they kind of suck. And they should just hire an actor or somebody professional to go up there and present the stuff. I think there's a lot of game developers too that are really jealous of people on YouTube and um, like like people like PewDiePie or Ninja or whatever that they're more popular and make more money than they do showing their game. So I think there's some jealousy going on too. And Matt Matt does Matt does Matt has a great voice, but but he's got he's got that radio voice. I think he he I, I wish I could just hear the real Matt. I I know Matt does. You hear the real Matt on VGO, but when he does his podcast, he's in like radio voice all the time. Krell, yeah, I we God bless him. I wish I could do that. You know that. You shouldn't be jealous of them. I mean, they, they're lucky as hell. Just look at them as like somebody that won the lotto. But I think I think the game manufacturers are actually pissed off that people that play their game make more than they do. Krell... I, I just... I want, it, I want his own voice. I like... It's cool that he can do the voices, but... His his podcast is way more professional than mine, though. He has all the equipment and everything, but I'm just trying to be real, trying to be me. So I listen to all the podcasts. So I, you know what? I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a, a, a guest on mine, though. I'm trying to get. Um, 
Have you guys ever seen it's his name is Nathan Barnett, but Keith Apicary, he does the character Keith Apicary, or he does like Trevor in real life. He's got a huge YouTube channel. I'm trying to get him on my podcast. the basis for the movie big only these annoying freaking kids know um what the kids want to watch yeah pretty much you're right what's up namco you're back to your game hawk huh again i thought you switched to namco dickie you are a star you are a star dickie <laughs> what's up namco Derek, today has been um, pretty slow. You should uh, ha have you been in town today at all? Have you been in Portland at all? Have you seen all the flooding? It was a state of emergency today. Yeah, that's Namco. Gamehawk's Namco, crow. Oh, we got two Namcos now. What's up? Hello, Namco fifty one. Oh, he, sw he switched to his other name. Yep. Derek, you should see the lumber, the lumber place down the road. It had like two feet of water, man. The wood was like floating and stuff. Oh, there. I mean, the water was actually in the thing. It's going to be a mess. You ditched the stupid game hawk name. Um, that's cool. Not everything shut down though. Like it's still, I would say like like eighty percent of the this this place is open, but I will say it has. We've been slower than normal today. We did okay sales wise for a state of emergency, but the way I looked at it, I either got to be here or I got to be home. And if I'm home, my wife would probably have me doing something, so I'd rather be here. <laughs> she she'd have me working on something. We, we were fine, but, like, that main road, Derek, holy crap, you should see some of those businesses. Like, the that is it 84 Lumber, whatever it is, Carter Lumber or whatever, it could not, there's no way they could open. Their whole parking lot had, like, two feet of water. The wood was all underwater. That wood's all going to be wasted. It's going to soak up all that water. There is a lot of places that were just really flooded today there were people um kayaking down the streets downtown derek why is my <coughs> i just realized they were still talking but nothing was on the screen so what What's everybody's favorite game they saw so far at E3? Oh, sweet. This is the Switch game Metal Wolf Chaos. I didn't know this was an old arcade game. Yeah, I know, Robert, you and Madden PC. It's been 12 years since they put Madden on PC. Sekuru? Or however you spell it. Yeah, I don't know either. <coughs> yeah, the graphics aren't that great on this game. Okay, so this is an old arcade game from Japan that never really got, never, nobody knew about, and they're porting it to the Switch. <coughs> Are you talking about Ghost of Ch Toshima? Yeah, Ghost of Toshima. Yeah, that looks sweet, Derek.
I never even heard of this arcade game, so yeah. Oh, looking. I'm looking forward to the new Trials game. I I love Trials. Um, I can't. I can't wait for that, but it's not till next year. It's coming out on Switch too, which is kind of cool. I might, I might actually get it on Switch because I'll have. Uh, I kind of like the idea of portable. See, I wasn't big on uh, Division, so. Breaking news! What's breaking news? Tattoo. Trials HD in uh, Summer of Arcade. Yeah. Oh, God, I love Trials. Um, I still have it on my... It, it's Xbox One compatible now. And I have the new Trials on my PS4. PS5 to launch in 2020. Where'd you see that tattoo? I mean, that's kind of what I predicted for a while. I would love to see PS5 next year, but I know nobody would but me. Division, Thomas, the Division was terrible when it first started. I wouldn't say it was terrible. It just wasn't that great when it started. It's gotten a lot better, like, over the, over, you know, what, the year or two years that it's been out. It's actually pretty popular now, Thomas. It's, like, almost not even the same game it was when it started. It's not my thing, though. I'm not that big into the Division. Yeah, the graphics were really cool on the division. The uh, city was full and huge at D Hill. Yeah, Thomas, we've actually sold quite a. I I will tell you, it started selling well. It started like picking up in sales again. There was a time where I probably had like I don't know, like 30, 40 copies of the division at each store, and now I only got a few. So, like people, people when they first got it, they didn't like it and they dumped it. And we got we we got a lot of them traded in, and then it started selling good again, like almost like a year after it came out. PlayStation lifestyle gaming app. We'll see. It wouldn't be, you know, that's one of the things, tattoo. I would say you, you'd probably hear about behind closed doors things. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they are showing off some early early playstation 5 stuff to other you know like developers like sony would be showing some stuff off to ea or you know um who's another big you know like ubisoft or something like that telltale to make a stranger things game that might be cool So this was an originally an Xbox, an original Xbox game that only came out in Japan. That's what they said, I think. So this game came out 14 years ago. time do I got? 10 more minutes. Derek, I started pricing some of these old strategy guides. If you're still in here. They're actually... Like, this one sells for about 15 bucks, so... Winning... We, somebody traded in a bunch of old, like, guides and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Like Nintendo Powers. It's kind of cool seeing these old strategy guides for the old NES games. 
I feel like I'm doing a John for his John's podcast right now. How John likes to go through like old magazines. You're killing more Valkyries? Nice. Yeah, the Nintendo. You know what? I should see. I, I have a Nintendo Power. Like, check out these. I have. I have like a stack of Nintendo Powers here. Um. Oh, this is an awesome game right here. Metal Storm on NES. You guys, if you haven't played that, play it. Play it. Let's see here. Um. <coughs> oh my god, look at this advertising. The uh, the four score. So it's got a Jeep with like four cool dudes. Kind of lame. John does that because he, you know what he does? He's like, oh shit, I gotta do a podcast. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. So I'll just get out an old magazine. You know, I, I bet it would be fun, but I've been to most of the old E3s. I'm old, so I've been to most of them. It's, I'm going to talk about some of those. Like, I'm one specific. I'm going to talk about an old E3. Let's see the top 30. I'm doing a John show right now. This is the top 30 for March 1991. We got Super Mario 3, Final Fan Super Mario was number one. Final Fantasy number two. Chris Chris Dallas, number three. Mega Man two, 3 was number 4, uh, Mega Man 2 was number 5, Dr. Mario 6, Legend of Zelda 7, Dragon Warrior 2 was 8, NES Play Action Football, really that game blew, that was number 9, Castlevania 3 was number 10, I can't believe NES Play Action Football was in there. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but like Punch-Out was 20, and Metroid was 21, good lord. Destiny of an Empire was number 13. You got to remember, though, this is, uh, um, it says players, pros, and dealers combined. So, so like, people would, would, uh, um, would vote. So you probably had a bunch of, like, like, how the hell did this game, um, what is it, NES, NES play action football. They probably had a bunch of people that worked on the game you know, vote for it to get it into the top ten. Oh my god, here here we go. The here here it is the gameplay uh counselor profiles right there. <laughs> I'm gonna read, was this guy was this the guy that John was talking about? Eli Wolf right here? I don't remember. Um, this guy, uh, he became a, a gameplay counselor in 1989. His hobbies are playing video games, drawing, listening to rap music. Does this guy look like he listens to rap music? Um, best accomplishment? This is his best accomplishment. He finished Iron Sword. His favorite game is Stolar Jetman. He listens to vanilla. You know what's funny though is I used to listen to rap back then, big time. I was, I listened to some shit I probably shouldn't have. The counselor's corner. I think this was what like what John was reading. That's funny. These are kind of cool to go back through though. NWA. Yeah, I listen to NWA. Uh, Ghetto Boys, uh, what else, um, Cypress Hill, oh, this has a whole, like, this has a whole thing on, um, here we go, we got G.I. Joe, uh, walkthrough right here. <coughs> What's up, little French lady? Oh, check out, this is kind of cool. 
the inside story of the NES, they actually have like the guts of it. That's kind of cool. They show you like all the parts. I don't even remember that. I mean, I know all that stuff now, but. See you, Namco. It's pretty cool. Cut the pin. That's right. Cut the pin. <laughs> um. So that's how that worked. Like with the what was that? Hey, Kev, I haven't been on the stream. Well. Um. You had to, this was the poll, you had to, you had to fill out the, and send it in, and that's how they voted on those games. You know, the top ten, it wasn't based on sales or anything. Oh my god, I gotta, some of the pictures in this thing are awesome. Let me see if I can find a, a funny one to show you guys. This thing has a whole walkthrough for Castlevania 3. Kind of cool. Castlevania 3. It's like a whole walkthrough for it. Uh oh, uh oh, we got we got a centerfold. Mega Man Two centerfold. That's actually pretty sweet. Cool. So, anybody else got any uh, topics I should? Uh, um, okay, Jack. What am I hyped for? Um, well, I'm kind of Spider Man. Um, I'm, I'm hyped for Spider-Man. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima look good. Um, trials, I'm big. I'm, I'm all about Trials, but that's next year. Um, Skyrim looked cool. Um, actually, Rage 2 looked pretty good, too. The, well, the new Skyrim, they only showed the title, but but actually the Elder Scrolls game that's on phone didn't look, I mean, that's on mobile didn't look too bad. Last of Us 2, Last of Us 2 looks great. Last of Us 2 is next year, though, too. Oh, I got one minute. One minute, one minute. How's this sword? Do you guys remember this game? I don't remember this game. Um, Swordmaster? I don't think I've ever played Swordmaster. I miss out. Looks pretty cool. What is my conclusion? Well, E3 is technically not over yet, little French lady, but um, it's pretty much what I expected. Microsoft always has the coolest presentation. I was more interested in the game Sony had, though, for the most part, even though their presentation was pretty boring. Um, and Nintendo, I was kind of disappointed in Nintendo because they really didn't show much at all other than Pokemon and uh, and uh, Smash Brothers. Wow, this looks badass. Uh, can win a trip to, I'm assuming this is some kind of VR, uh, Battletech Center in Chicago. Look at those things. That's crazy. Like, a, like little arcade games like you sit down in. I have to look into that. I'm going to see what that was. I kind of wish so too, Crow, but Nintendo... Nintendo Japan calls all the shots, so... My god, look at how bad this art is on the front. Mega Man 3. 
I think I could have drew that. EA's press conference, they pretty much just apologized for half of it. And you know what I really didn't like? They, and actually, I didn't like that they were talking about, um, you know, how much money they donated to charity and stuff. If you have to, if you have to tell people like how good you are by donating charity to charity, you're doing it wrong. To for it does look like he looks he looks half free. Yeah, he does he does look deformed. <laughs> was that sloth from the Goonie and the Mega Man Hobbit? It might be. It might be. <clears throat> Alright, I got, I'm going to go lock the door up. I'm going to keep streaming though, so don't leave because it takes me a little while to close out. But just give me a second. <laughs> Yeah, it was not the right time to talk about it. I agree with you guys. I, I think it's... There was a lot of that going on in the um, in the press conferences, and, and I didn't like it. You can keep asking me questions while I... I I'm, I'm just closing out here. I think the new Fallout looks cool, Thomas. I'm, you know what? Actually, that would that would look cool too. Uh, we'll see how it is with you know being online only though. Hopefully, it's my. I didn't like Elder Scrolls Online. I know a lot of people did, but I didn't like Elder Scrolls Online, um, basically because um, when I played it, I felt like like everybody running around like kind of crazily, kind of like ruined the. Um, the mood of it for me. What's up, Del? Del was all fired up about Fallout, I'm sure. I don't think they're going to do Gar Galaxy for a while. I could be wrong. That'd be cool. I was upset they didn't show Metroid. They've, even, they've announced Metroid in the past. You're in Sandusky. You're in Sandusky and you didn't come, come see me today. I see how it is, Del. Thanks. You just got me. Are you are you staying there tonight? You were just you're just in Sandusky. You're just in Sandusky last weekend too. Del just likes to come in my my room and steal all my attention. So you just you just got to Sandusky and you're leaving already? What you come? What you have to go to Sandusky for? Uh, never mind. If you don't want to stay.
I'll be in Sandusky soon. Battle, you know what? Me too. Battletoads. I, I was g glad to see Battletoads, but they didn't show anything. They just had a cartoon. Um, I'm assuming it's just going to be like a remake of one of the originals. Like it's just going to be a beat 'em up. I hope it. I like beat 'em up, so I hope it's good. But I'm assuming that's going to be like a twenty dollar like arcade only game. You know, like Xbox Live only. Your nephew's birthday party. What you get him? What you get your nephew? Let's see. Are you the cool aunt or not? You got to tell us what. What did you get your nephew? And we get to all judge you on if it's a good game. Yeah, Thomas saying they they just showed the Battletoads logo and they had like a cartoon like of the car and you saw like a tongue. They didn't show any actual gameplay or anything. Fifty dollar Visa card. I guess that's cool, but that's cool. That's a lot for how old is this kid? Fifty dollars. I guess he'll be happy with that. I guess we can consider you a cool aunt then. You know what would have been cooler is a fifty dollar gift card to this place right here. Could have got him one of these cool looking things. Oh, he's into Pokemon cards. Well then, yeah. We've been debating if we should sell Pokemon cards again, but we used to, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. Should we get Pokemon cards again here? Take care of Delverino. Later, Del. I got my got my list of topics for my podcast. Printing it out and taking it home. I guess she's a cool aunt. Come on, computer, work with me. No. This week's favorite hats. I have a ton of hats. I have too many hats. My wife hates all my hats. I have, because I, I have like a, I just have like a giant pile of hats. On top of my on top of my like dresser thing I have I have them all stacked up I mean they, they're neat but they're all stacked up uh, family guy wrote, I must have missed that family guy you just got done with God of War God of War is awesome Bonjour, little French lady. God of War is awesome. I gotta go. I was, you know what? I was kind of excited. They they announced there was gonna be some extra stuff for God of War. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't take French. I have no idea what you guys are saying.
but do you have all the great armor? I was busy. Today sucked, honestly. Um, this has been pretty good, but today sucked. G3. I, I was talking about this earlier. This city got hit with like almost six to seven inches of rain last night, and uh, it's actually under a state of emergency at the moment. There's a lot of places that are underwater. I'm lucky this place isn't. Um, but like right down the road, the lumber place has probably like two feet of water in their parking lot and in their building. So there are a lot of places that are flooded. Krell, I have no idea on that. There's like no word on that. I doubt the smelly guy took a shower. I've, the, have you seen though it's at E3 Krell have you seen the videos and stuff and John, John didn't get any of those exclusives well not only that G3 we're right by the lake so there are a lot of places that if you get that much water the lake just um, ri get, rises that much and it floods a lot especially downtown in this area so I mean I drive by the lake I mean, I can see the lake from here. Who's a smell? Just the guy that comes in all the time. Football's coming home. It's coming home. What do you mean, Aza? No, not too bad of customers lately. Just stinky customers, not really bad customers, stinky. <coughs> okay. Who needs Thunder Candy and just float down the street? There were there were kids. I saw pictures of kids uh, out in uh, um, they were out in uh, um, kayaks going down the road today. You, you know, Robert, I really didn't love Thunder Canyon because really you just got soaked. I mean, and and the thing that sucks about Thunder Canyon is it's lake water, so you smelled like lake water afterwards. When you're a kid, I guess you don't care, but. It's okay, like, if you take your shoes off and everything, but if, I remember the first time I wrote Thunder Canyon, I, I, I didn't know you got soaked, and, and I got soaked, and, like, your shoes fill up with water, and, oh, then you got to walk around in wet shoes all day. It sucked. But, yeah, the, the, the Thunder Canyon is just lake water. Yeah, I guess if the chicks rode with you. All right. Can't be worse than going to the Jersey Shore. Yeah. All right, guys. I got to end it. I'm going to look for my podcast. And I oh, saw a Super Mario deodorant. Uh, nice. For cars. I kind of thought it uh, wouldn't be strong enough. A little French. I'm going to get the candles. I'm going to get the candles tomorrow. I'm going to try candles. I'll see you guys. <clears throat> Later, Robert.